it's easy when uh, people get, they get so locked into here and don't flip it, don't this, and then they forget that there's a feel to this. You were pretty good. Practice, young Jedi. <laughs> Beautiful. That was better than my throat. <laughs> there we go, he's from Star Trek now, everybody. <laughs>
throwing it to the target. We're trying to get you to feel and be external as much as possible with uh, the target. Okay. okay. It's easy when uh, people get, they get so locked into here and don't flip it, don't this, and then um, they forget that there's a feel to this. Yeah. Okay. So that's a, just an overall arching idea is that then when you put both hands on it, it becomes a lot easier obviously to, to control the, the club, but you'll see good players all the time. That's interesting when they're getting ready to hit a shot, it's almost like they get up here and they, they have their club choices. They look at the lie. And then you almost, sometimes you almost see them kind of like, right? And, and they're, they're very out here, right? And then they're, because now, and I see a little rock here, I wanna hit it right over. I have both hands on there and, and I'm trying to make it external, right? We talk about basketball. Yeah. When you're shooting, what are you looking at? The back of the rim for me. Back of the rim. Yeah. That's a target. Yeah. In golf, we're looking at ball, aren't we? So yeah. sometimes people get disconnected. They go, yeah, I'm going to hit it on that rock, that rock, that rock. They get over here and they go, okay, don't skull it. Don't chunk it. Don't do that. Right? And they're like, right? And they're getting into that situation. So I want us to be external. That's yeah. the mental side of this. Mm. Now, physically, and I think you already have a very good technique. I like to start with the basic model of very little hand action, feeling like the triangle is staying in place, right? If I get too handsy, it would hit me on the side. And so now this just becomes a extension kind of of this, of this triangle this way, okay, without us flipping. You were pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Practice, young Jedi. Okay? Yeah. So as we get over this, um, let's go, we'll go technique first, and then we'll get back into that mental side of the part of it here, okay? So this is going to grip it there. Our goal is to maintain that triangle. I know it feels a little odd at first. I do one without a ball first. Okay. So you can feel that that triangle stays in the same structure back and through. Do you want me to kind of go this? this yeah, so I noticed you, you like to be very open, sure. okay, which yeah. can get the left hip out of the way and help you see the target better. My only negative on that is if you go here, 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 and you take the club this way a little bit, you could get stuck, mm. okay? So maybe we minimize how much open we are, yeah. By a little bit to, to make sure we have plenty of space okay. to work with. Okay. Gotcha. So a little less open. Oh. And now we're feeling like this triangle stays the same. The hands are going to be pretty quiet. It's going to feel like it's, it's more of this is moving you. There you go. And less hands, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So let's execute a shot now. Okay. So still plenty far, right? Yeah. Too far. Too far. So now just change the length of the swing. Technically, we, we were in good shape there. The hands were quiet. <laughs> Show off. <laughs> All right, one more time. And again, this is a drill. So the drill is to have an experience of feel, right? Oh, a, little okay, thin. a little thin. A little thin. Okay, one more time. I think I kind of slipped. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to feel 60% weight here, keep it there the whole time, yeah. and we're just going to stay level. Okay. okay. Yep. Okay. Okay, obviously good end result, right? It's thin still. A fraction thin, yeah. and you have a little bit of a rocking that happens sometimes. So you will rock back instead of staying level okay right so feeling that that shoulder almost stays level more all right one more okay. time beautiful okay so that had the crisp contact i was looking for yep what did you feel different i know the ball was different off yep. the face anything physically yeah uh, i'm just trying to <laughs> not go up because every time i feel like i'm going like this yeah. a little bit and so i just kind of felt this on my foot felt this and then just just staying on that plane, uh, the plane, I guess, so I don't go up. Perfect, right? Yeah. So it's, again, easy for golfers to say what they don't want. Don't do this, don't do this. Yeah. Replace it with what I want. I want to stay level. I want to stay uh, weight on the left, right? Always have a positive uh, intention. Okay. Because, uh, again, it's very easy to say don't go up. Yeah. And then my next one, I go, I go down. So yeah. it's like be clear on what we're trying to accomplish there. Yeah. Okay? Cool. So uh, we'll take this away now. And let's go back to the idea of short game is a lot about feel. Yeah. Okay? and we're gonna do the under, uh, underhand toss drill, is we do it for a few reasons. One, uh, having a target that we yeah. wanna land it on, 
right? And everybody's tossed a ball underhanded in their life or yeah. they take a piece of trash and they toss it into the, the garbage can and they're pretty accurate with it, aren't they? Yeah. Okay. So here, we're just gonna go from our golf posture and we're gonna to toss a ball. And it's twofold. One is I want you to have a specific spot you wanna land on. Let's just for this, there's this little rock here. Yeah. I want you to land it on the rock. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's yeah. still like from a level. From a chipping posture. Okay, good job. Do it again. Okay, and last one. Feel like you're in a chipping motion and you're just tossing the ball underhanded. Okay, pretty close, right? Oof. And all the balls were pretty close to what we want. Yeah. Now take that 56 again. And I want you to, without a ball right now, imagine that you had to, just with right hand only, use the club as your right hand now. You're gonna throw toss the ball with that. A little more, feel like it's a little more like the arm doing it. Okay, less hands, less hands. Less hands. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. There we go, that's what I'm looking for. Awesome, Ooh, okay? Okay, that feels better. So we, so we put a little ball there. Same feeling here is that we're, we're tossing a ball underhanded. Beautiful. That's better than my throws. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Do it again. Two in a row that hit our spot, didn't they? Yeah, it was pretty okay. good. But I think what, what we found is that we, we don't necessarily toss a ball like this. There's a, my arm is throwing it. Yeah. Not just my hands. Yeah. And I think that's the same with chipping. If we get into, it's like, no, 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 no. I'm going to still, my arm is going to swing. That's what we want to feel. Okay. So now put both hands on there with that sensation. We have our intermediate target we talked about. That's what we're really, whether this ball ends up going all the way to here is irrelevant. How close can you get to landing on here? That's truly to see how good our short game is from a feel standpoint. Okay. I, can't, <laughs> I have this like inclination to always like rise up. Excellent. Good job. One more time, please. Excellent. Okay. Now I was guessing that this was the correct intermediate target to then let it release to get to here. It was pretty close, wasn't it? Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay? So even though this is the end goal, yeah. we're trying to problem solve what's the best way to obviously get from point A to point C. This is point B. Yeah. Do we use a lob wedge and land it here? Do we use our 56 here? Do we use a gap wedge here? You know, we're not there yet yep. because you're learning one club and moving how big of a swing is going to affect how far the ball goes, correct? Yeah. Okay. Now, I just want to introduce a little bit of that down the road, you're going to play in some unique settings to where the 56 might be limiting for yeah. you. Mm -hmm. And we want to be able to hit some different shots with the same technique. Okay. Okay. As you evolve in this game, you want to master what you just did. We did the stick drill. We did the right hand under drill to help the feel of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is a pretty straightforward chip shot though. Okay. Yeah as we add different uh, lies, firmnesses of green, going from 50, 60 feet, those things are gonna change. Okay. So let me just look at it from a standpoint of what's the simplest thing that I could change to make the ball go different distances. I could have one club, the 56 we talked about, and I could make it go different distances by going different lengths of swings, correct? Yep. What if I had the same length swing all the time? I could use a different club, Yeah. right? So if I went with a, 60 degree yeah. with the same technique we just talked about. That ball goes high, doesn't roll much at all. Yep. Then we go, okay, I'm gonna go 56, same technique. The loft, loft of the club now makes it go a little further. And then finally we can go, well, I want it to go a little further. I can go 52, same length, length swing, and it would run out a little bit more. Yeah. So on and so forth, pitching wedge, nine iron, eight iron. Have you ever chipped with like a, a nine iron before? Uh, I did it with a pitching wedge once. Pitching wedge, great. And what was the result? Why would we ever do that? Uh, I did it when I was like, I had a lot of space and it was the back of the green and I just wanted it to run. Perfect, yeah. right? Yeah. So we, we're gonna have similar technique, mm -hmm. but we're now putting a different tool in there yeah. to make the ball do what it does, right? Mm -hmm. If we had to go all the way across this green, I would much rather use a pitching wedge than try to hit my 56 harder or bigger. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So why don't we finish up today with back to that pitching wedge. Okay. Let's go grab the pitching wedge. And quick question yeah. um, about the face of the club. Just kind of keep the same 
uh, obviously if I'm in the sand or whatever, maybe, maybe more open, but like if I wanted to go distance, I should just kind of just keep a consistent face or for now. Yes. Yeah. But you're, you're bringing up kind of where I'm going with this discussion. So oh, okay. I'll, I'll have you change over there again. So great question is that let's go back to that 56 in a way. Yeah. I'll just grab mine is I can make this 56 do a lot of different things. Yeah. We, we right now are very standard, a little bit open, a little bit open, yeah. weight on the left. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to go lower, I could de-loft it, ball back, hands forward, and that thing's going to come out low and like a pitching wedge. Oh, yep. That's one option. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, down the road, though. And I, I can make this open up like this, and ball doesn't go anywhere. Yep. So, yes, you can make one club do many, many, many different things. Mm -hmm. That's that next level for us. Okay. Right now, I want you to get comfortable with, let's say I want to go to the alignment stick, which is at the other side of the green now. Yeah. Okay? Instead of trying to hit the 56 harder, yep. I have my pitching wedge now, and same technique, same setup, and I'm gonna let the loft of the club now drive it towards my target. Cool. So that came out hotter because the pitching wedge has much left loft, okay, is we can now calibrate these different clubs, mm -hmm. right? Uh, this is gonna probably go in the air one third and then run two thirds, for instance. Okay. okay. So now let's go pitching wedge. We're going to a different target, mm -hmm. but we're letting the club do more of the work than us trying to hit it harder. And um, on the follow through? Yes. Is it like, coming out or like how do you? Oh, it still be connected in still here? Connected? Yeah, I, I don't want it to, I don't want you to feel like you have to, like this is feeling like I'm still connected. Oh, I see. Rather than like, yeah, I don't want. That's the thing is, I don't want this to be independent, mm. right? I want us to feel it's all connected. Yeah, that's why we did the stick drill in a way. Or if I if I did this in my sternum, that would be very easy. If I moved it away, but that's a small swing that I'm doing a lot of compensations for in a short amount of time. Yeah. So we're letting the club, the pitching wedge, now do the work that it's going to come out lower. It's going to roll more. And so for, on your ad address. Still yeah, are you, um, do you like being, if it's a pitching wedge, on the back foot? For right now, I do the exact same setup I had as that 56 is my pitching wedge. I had feet closer together like you do. I had my feet open. I had my weight left. All that stayed the same. I had ball position back, right? Yeah. All I've changed is now a club that has roughly nine degrees less of loft, mm -hmm. make the ball go lower and run out more without me having to do anything extra. Nice and crisp. What does it do? Runs out more. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Do it again. Great distance control, right? Yeah. That was our goal is distance control. Rarely is somebody way off to the right or way off to the left. Yeah. Short game is about distance control. It's about feel. It's about like with the right hand only, I'm just tossing a ball. I'm out here. That ball, perfect distance. Yeah. Right? That's pretty good. Three feet left. Great. Three footer. Yeah. Most people are having the problem, either they're chunking it, the ball goes here, they skull it, and there's 20, 30 feet away because short or long. Yeah. We're working specifically today on quality of contact, letting the club do the work, and then becoming more external of, like you did with basketball. I'm just looking at the back of the hoop, back of the hoop, back of the hoop. I'm looking at intermediate target. I'm reacting to that. Yeah. Sometimes we get too much in our head of, don't do, don't do this, don't do that, don't do that. And then before you know it, this short motion, it's all over the place. Yeah. And so we're going to build on that platform as we go. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then one last question in regards to uh, going back, uh, backswing versus follow through mm -hmm. is, do you like 50-50? Do you like 30-60? I mean, 70? I, I'm probably no. more on the lines of, of a one-to-one -one ratio. Okay. So if we did, um, and I know you already have a great putting coach, is I use a metronome a yeah, lot. Yeah. So we can, right. I like one to one a little bit, tick, right? I think if we go, I think it's gonna be hard to feel, okay. right? In reality, there's more acceleration happening. Okay, yeah. so I don't want you to think it's just a pure pendulum. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there is a little bit of an acceleration through, but I don't want it to be grabby. I don't want it to be hitting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. You got plenty. You got the clubs to do the work for you. There's some situations where the the rough is very thick. Yes, you may have to grab it a little bit. We don't have to do it for this. Okay. okay, so let's keep it a more even keel on that. Perfect. All right? Yeah.
Sounds good. Okay, okay, okay. As you guys know, we just had a great session with Rick today. We looked at some short game stuff, but the main reason, as you guys have known, why Rick is on this journey is because he may be the greatest mental coach out there on planet Earth. And so with that, we're gonna do a lot more than just full swing stuff, but really hone in into the things that is gonna help me on the course and just competing and scoring lower scores. And so with that, Rick, let us know what we're gonna to do today. What we're gonna do is, you know, the mental game is hard to make tangible, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, we did some stuff on the golf course, but how do we measure it? How do I know there's a brain there that's working properly? Impossible. Oh. <laughs> Not impossible. Mm -hmm. We have a Focus Calm device, which is a basic EEG device. Yeah. It's going to go on your forehead. Mm -hmm. It's going to measure brainwave activity in real time. It's going to tell me how stressed you are or how in flow you are, right? <laughs> yes, and we're going to start today with a mindset fitting, and we're going to talk about breathing and visualization. But down the road, we're going to take this on the golf course. We're going to see in real time, are certain shots making you stressed out? Are there other ones that you can now, with a proper pre-shot routine, get you from that fear state to a flow state? But now we can measure that. So I'm very excited to get you to work on this. All right, let's do it. All right, let's go. All right. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm born ready. Let's do it. Now, we're, we're in the trees here, which I know you've never been in. I've, yeah, I don't even know what On the golf course, is. yeah. So, <laughs> us other golfers, we, we, we have to have those challenges every now and then, right? <laughs> So part of the game is, the challenge of the game is the mental side, right? Is the ability to stay focused, be confident, be in control of our emotions. Mm -hmm. It's easy to get distracted, have fear, have doubt. And yet we want to be able to quantify how we're going to get better at that. Yeah. So we have Focus Calm, which is a, a great device that uh, my company has partnered with to be able to measure our state, yeah. mental, emotional state, right? So this, this headband is going to go on your forehead, okay? And we have an app that... Uh, it, it gets connected. So there we go. He's from Star Trek now, everybody. <laughs> and we have a, a, a zero to 100 where we're looking at the, the ability to, in real time, go where are we at from a number standpoint. Mm -hmm. So right now, it's kind of learning your head right now and seeing if there's a brain there. And, oh, step one, we have a brain. I'm alive. <laughs> okay. I got okay. So we have the zero to 100 score that's occurring, right? Mm -hmm. uh, zero to 35, they call it an active state. Uh, we would also have red going on up here, mm -hmm. and that would be more stress. A lot of brainwave activity happening, a lot of thinking happening. Then we have 35 to 65, which is kind of our normal state through day to day, us talking. Yeah. And then 65 to 100 is getting closer and closer to this flow state or focus calm state. Less brainwave activity happening, mm -hmm. right? So we're measuring this now, right? And what we're going to be doing next time is certainly adding layers to this is going from what we call a closed environment, which we're gonna do now, to more of an open environment, to actually hitting golf shots with it on to see does the state change as we go. Okay. We have challenges, right? So yeah. sometimes challenges, we take them on. Some people feel threat and they get they get a little psyched out even before they hit it. So we're gonna just do a couple little exercises here first, right? Yeah, let's do it. Um, so right now to give everybody an idea, he's, he's already, look at this guy, he's already relaxed and calm and oh, this is awesome, <laughs> right? So the first one we're gonna do is I'm gonna have you look out in the distance for me and find something very, very specific to look at. It could be a branch, it could be a leaf on a branch. Gotcha. Okay. Now, as you do that, we're going to add another layer of breathing to this. Mm -hmm. I want you to inhale through your nose at a two count, one, two, and exhale at a two count, one, two. Okay, let's do that again. Inhaling, one, two, exhaling, one, two. Okay, so what we're doing here is figuring out if certain breathing rates will help us, if certain types of visualization or focus would help us too. Now, the next one I want you to do is find something even further in distance. Like there's a house out in the distance. It could be a top of a tree way out there. Yeah. Okay. And as you look out there, I want you to, can you still see me in the corner of your eye as you look way out there in the distance? Yep. Okay, great. Do that again is I want you to look out in the distance and imagine you have to see 180 degrees around you. And as you do that, let's take a breath, inhale two, and exhale two. One more smooth breath like that, please. Okay, great. We call that expanded awareness. For a lot of players, when we're stressed, we're in our head a lot. We're overthinking. We're, oh my gosh, don't do this. And in between shots, uh, what we teach at Flow Code is to be able to be external, way out there. I mean, have you ever looked at a, a beautiful, you're on the beach, beautiful ocean, you're just like lost in the vast of it. That gets us out of our head. Mm -hmm. So that last one was called expanded awareness. Mm -hmm. It helps us uh, deal with stresses a little bit more. Now we started with just this basic breathing rate of inhale to exhale to. Yeah. Um, 
We are gonna experiment with different breathing rates where sometimes we hold the breath, sometimes we exhale longer, all those type of things to see if we can now change our score in real time, okay? Gotcha. And then again, as we add potential stresses, say potential, maybe it's a shot, a flop shot over a bunker that you're not as comfortable with, Yep. where's that number? And then in 30 seconds, which is a pre-shot routine, can I get that number higher? Can I get you in a more focused, calm state? That's our goal mentally. Yeah. Now, I have given you one of these to practice at home, and we're gonna be doing some stuff through Zoom to help you utilize this, but a lot of it is gonna be during breathing rates, and focus and body scan, being aware of where we hold tension and everything like that. Not a lot of players do that. Yeah, they, They're focusing on their technique a lot, but they're not focusing on the state I'm in, the awareness that I'm in as we go. So we're gonna have some fun with this guy, okay? This is insane. <laughs> so zero to 100, um, again, zero to 35, it, everybody gets in that state. So don't think like, oh my gosh, it's when we're in the state. Mm -hmm. Like I may come up to this tree and go, oh man, I'm behind the tree, I may be stressed. Yeah. But by the time I hit the shot, I don't want to still be stressed. Yeah. So now what do I do with that is going to be important. We talked about on our, one of our playing lessons about making decisions and playing to our strengths. And that, that's part of this, yeah. right? We have, to have a, we have to problem solve as best that we can. So we're doing a little bit of what we call a mini mindset fitting right now. I'm okay. just trying to get your baselines. And then next time we're going to go full blown mindset fitting. Oh my God, I'm see. excited, let's All right. go. All righty. Awesome, Rick. Hey guys, if you are interested in this content, if you guys love this lesson, definitely smash that like button. Stay tuned, subscribe. The next video is gonna be insane with Rick. We're gonna do an entire mindset fitting. I'm nervous, but I'm excited. So with that, I'll see you guys next time. Let's go.